guys can see, I got the uh, coilovers on. I didn't do a video on it. This is my first time ever installing them. I want to take my time, make sure I did it right. It would have been a whole lot longer if I did a video. But um, as you can see, I have the front set way too low for daily driving. Uh, the tire is actually tucking a good ways in there. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, it's it's really not that big of a deal besides the front lip is scraping on everything. And so I'm gonna try to get my ride height to somewhere around four inches off the ground. Because right now, um, I can't even get a jack under there. The pinch weld is uh, it's maybe about three, four inches off the ground. But I wanna try to get the front lip up there too. And uh, maybe be able to get a jack under there without using pieces of wood. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, Raise the car, it's way too far lowered. So these may or may not work. Um, I got these pieces of wood, I'm just gonna try laying side by side, pulling the car up on it. Should be, give me an inch or two to get the jack under it, which I think should be enough. My old spilter blown, so I literally just threw all the uh, old suspension in the trash. So I'm just laying these side by side, hoping it doesn't just uh, spin the wood up underneath it, it actually stays. If it doesn't stay, then I'll just screw these together. Uh, use it like that, but I feel like that should be enough to get the jack up underneath it because really it's not stupid low It's just barely low enough for the jack can fit So I've seen a lot of people measure this a lot of different ways um, The easiest way and it seems like the most reliable is going from the center of the hub up to the bottom of the fender But this can vary a lot depending on how good your fenders are and whatnot. My fenders seem to be pretty good um, So I'm just gonna measure it that way so you don't have to worry about uh Tire compression, suspension compression, all that other stuff. Uh, this is just a tried and true way without all the other factors. And then the other way, which is, uh, I'm probably gonna do this also just to be safe, is measuring from the ground to the pinch weld. Um, now my pinch weld's pretty messed up, so that itself isn't gonna be perfect either. <coughs> so um, I'm just gonna do both. One is for ride height, one's for ground clearance. They're kind of the same thing, but they are a little bit different. Really, I'm more worried about ground clearance because um, the front lip is scraping on everything. And I think for the actual wheel gap, I'm going to try to do about a half inch in between the uh, tire and the fender. And right now, the tire is actually tucking into the fender. So I'm probably going to have to drop the, I mean, raise the whole thing about an inch probably. The back seems okay and the back is as low as it can go. But honestly, I'm probably going to raise it about a half inch or so just to be safe. Uh, but yeah, the front is sitting a lot lower in the back right now. All right, it worked. I was able to get the uh, wheels up on the, the planks there, and I went in and did both sides. If it's not tall enough, I'll just go and take them out from this side and put them all on the other side. But um, I think it'll be tall enough to jack the entire front of the car up now. One other thing that probably helped with is that low profile jack. I probably wouldn't have to do any of this at all, but that's about 120 dollars. I may never need it again if I get this one to fit. This just barely fits. I don't know if you can see how close it is to the pinch weld, but that's like less than a quarter of an inch, but it works. Uh, so now I can actually raise the car with the jack to raise the suspension, and then I may never need to pull it up on pieces of wood again. Alright, so here's the actual coilovers. Um, <coughs> so to loosen them, there's this locking uh, ring down here at the bottom. So this prevents it from raising or lowering any. Um, if you don't move this up, you're just going to be changing the preload, which you don't really want to do um, unless <clears throat> you're trying to either lower the car a ton, then you would adjust the preload up to give you more room on the threads to lower it, or if um, you're tracking the car or anything like that, I would start messing with the preload maybe to get something better, but from the factory, just from day-to-day -day driving, it's, it's set pretty good. So uh, you're going to want to move this ring up, and then um, you want to go with the opposite ring of which direction you're moving. Now, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but these are sandwiched together to where um, they'll rotate the thread instead of rotating uh, just by themselves. So if you want to move the uh, suspension up, you'll actually rotate the bottom ring. And then if you want to move it down, you'll rotate the, uh, the top ring. And so these keep this from changing the preload, and that's why there's two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take it to about 15-ish and see if that helps at all. So 15 is way down here. That's going to add maybe about half an inch to an inch. And then uh, if that's still too low, then I'll just raise it a little more. It's really just more trial and error with coilover, just raising it a little bit at a time, lowering it. 
to get it right where you want it. And then after you get it where you want it, maybe let it sit for about a week or so and then go and get an alignment because the toe is going to be off, uh, the camera is going to be off, all that kind of stuff. Really, um, camera is not that big a deal. It will wear out your tires quicker, but it's not as bad as like toe. Uh, if you let toe go for too long, your tires will be gone in a month or two. So you really want to get an alignment once you get it where you want it and let it sit for just a little bit. Uh, make sure the coils actually settled and everything. Because if you get an alignment right away and then they drop a little bit more, your alignment can be off again. And then you just wasted 60, 70 bucks. So as you can see, it's a really slow process. Um, I had this collar pretty close to the bottom. It was only hand tight, uh, which I forgot to make sure it's loose. So definitely check that or else it's going to be changing the preload. But um, as you can see, this has maybe been about a couple minutes or so and that's all to move. So it's a really time consuming process. If you're going to want to change the ride height, I would definitely set aside an hour or two to do it um, just to make sure because it, you don't want to be stuck at a weird height if you have to run and go somewhere. Um, let's see. There we go. See, it's sitting right about 15 center of the hub, at the top of the fender, and it's about half to three quarter inch raise. I don't know if you can see that. All of this right here is how much I've added to the suspension. So, I'm just going to spin this back down, and uh, for whatever reason, my small expander doesn't fit this. But if you uh, hand tighten it and then get like a flathead and a hammer and give it a couple taps, it should be tight enough. Um, this doesn't have to be like torqued down or anything crazy like that. So you just get a flathead and tap it once or twice. That'll be enough to hold it. But um, now I'm going to do the other side, get the other side on 15, and then drop everything back down and see if it's good. I might just leave the rear for now. Um, it has about a half inch wheel gap, which is about what I want up here. Uh, so if I get those the same, then it should be okay. <coughs> so I got them both set for, uh, to 15 inches from center of the top of the fender. Just getting the wheels back in, I was looking. Never actually noticed this. I guess the uh, stock Miata daisies were uh, Nikis. So apparently, I'm running a Nikki wheels. Something else I forgot to. Uh, show is I actually got a water temp gauge in here so that's kind of worried about overheating and then with this uh, this is just like a little shift gauge normally it doesn't say the color there I keep it on this one it's like the lighter blue it kind of matches the radio but um <clears throat> I just ran the the wire up under here up and then through uh, where the cruise control comes in there's a rubber grommet if you have cruise control you'll have to cut a small hole in that if you don't there should just be a plug there and I ran the wire up there and then uh, around the uh, kind of near the crowd and then uh, over to the actual adapter and I just use the uh, radio hose adapter um, I've had no issues with it but if you really want to do something nicer which I'll probably do when I change all my radiator hoses is uh, Garage Star makes a sandwich plate for your thermostat to get a reading from there I don't know if it's quite as accurate but it definitely looks a whole lot nicer and it's probably gonna be more sturdy